fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Welcome back, everyone. We are Not Great RPG, and we're here once again, and the captions are working. And this Woo! is the city of Oshwamp. I can fix it. We're going to go around the table real quick, introduce ourselves, and then after a brief recap, we will pick up where we left off last week. Uh, as always, I am Don, and uh, today I'll be playing the Grave Domain Cleric, Ethier Revia. Paul, do you have the uh, Twitch op- open? Because Mike didn't post. So I do, I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I am Paul, I play Felix Gray, uh, Myth Water Enthusiast. <laughs> oh, we just did. You sure it's not just Water Enthusiast? No, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm glad I play Vorst. That's it? Yep. Alright, I'm yeah, going play Thariel. <laughs> I'm Sarah, and I play Retora. Uh, yeah, I'm John. I'm the Dungeon Master for Oshwamp. Uh, last week, when we gathered once back, uh, we returned to our safety uh, within the igloos, talked with Felthul and Yaz some more, uh, stayed committed to the task of going north to try to find access to the grove. We theorized some shit about, you know, terrifying sigils, and Felthul discussed some stuff with us about the nature of sigils and... Uh, Magic runes not having any inherent morality in them. They are just words and letters and metaphors and symbols. Uh, It is the intent of the magician for what it actually inspires. Um, And then we were like, hey, why don't we just, like, fucking, you know, Felthul's dying. Let's contemplate what we do with him right before his demise. (laughs) He was open to the concepts proposed by Thoriel for experimentation to see whether or not her blood would have any differing effect for him, suffering from the rot. Uh, he eventually got pretty drunk. Vorst and Felthul had a nice time singing together. Uh, Ethia's in the midst of the existential recovery by making some soup. Um, <laughs> art imitates life. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, in the midst of everybody getting pretty fucked up, we sent the other vampires away. We sent Yaz to bed. Felthul crawled away to sleep. Uh, we decided to once again attempt to spirit walk using the last of Melfell and Melissa's herb. Uh, rolled up a good joint, got pretty fucked up, hot box the igloo. Uh, Vor Stream was first. Um, concentrated on the experiences for him in youth. Uh, discussing how to figure out what to do and memories that not locked away, but obviously for uh, a man in his 20s. Uh, Fragments of memories from many stories at firesides from a little boy all would have melded together. Um, But a a dream, or perhaps a memory, of a shaman at a bonfire, Vorst and Reardo once again getting in trouble for not paying attention, Uh, Vorst desperately asking the shaman, what do we do, how do we stop it, where do we start, Um, why do we pray to the moon? Um, To which he answered, because the moon answers when the sun does not. Um, we were pulled out of that dream and then uh, into the midst of Thariel who once again uh, eagerly concentrated on the experiences around Laverna Uh, a vision that was entirely enshrouded in darkness Uh, the appearance of a faint bit of movement uh, and depth and complexity within the vision, almost like looking at a black curtain that entirely encapsulates you. Uh, the voice of Laverna obviously chided uh, Thariel, calling her to come home, that she still has a task and that she will be welcomed as soon as she completes it. Uh, Thariel told her to let her out, and Laverna told her that there are no dreams that she does not keep, and that she keeps her here within those. Uh, so we're picking up with that, with the concluding statement from Laverna, and I will say that as that whisper echoes out, I ask you to once again make a wisdom saving throw. Don't fuck me over, dice, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Calling it three. Mm-hmm. All right, wisdom. Mm-hmm. It's a 15 on the die. Oh, mm-hmm. all right. Never mind. I'm very wise. Mm-hmm. It's pretty wise. Wise individual. Mm-hmm. It's not <laughs> wise enough to open my... It's a little light. Uh, this is 22. Okay. There is, as you are once again attempting to 
almost sever this connection to her because in the state of spirit walking it is almost uh, a transient location for where your your consciousness and your spirit simultaneously swirl together and are capable of interacting with external forces. Laverne is very experienced at doing the same. There is a moment in where you in your incorporeal form recognize that not that you have any kind of like iridescent consistency to you, but almost that there is a very thin vapor in the area where you would expect your body to be, like a gray lingering smoke that hovers. And within the area of what you would assume to be yourself, you see this dark, twisted, small, but pulsing and growing orb concentrated or just above like your navel, like right below your diaphragm, almost like it's twisting and pulsing and growing. <laughs> Laverna, I'm not the child I once was. Speak to me like an adult. Forever and ever, my baby, you'll be. What did you plague me with? What is this? No plague. But a parasite. No parasite. Does it not feast from me? No. What is it? You will see. I want to try and push the veal, like, reach and... Outwards yeah. into the curtain or, uh, adjacent to you? Mm -hmm. Sure. Make a wisdom check. Again. 21. 21? Yeah. I will say that... <clears throat> You have fewer experiences with this and the complexities of it. However, there is some force within you driving this incorporeal nature around you. A willpower that extends here, even when your material form is incomplete, almost incongruous, a senseless world, and you thrust this almost lazily formed, not arm, Appendage would be the closest thing where it, it's not, it, it lacks density and consistency in the shape. It's like it's moving out from you in extension. And you press against this curtain and you do feel that there is a ripple. Like you are able to feel like there is a groove. Obviously, you know, if I were to run my hand over the banana, there would be... <laughs> A seductive moment between Glenn and I, <laughs> but the way in which there would hey, be... you lock eyes first. <laughs> I'm going to run my hand over this board. Listen, I put it sideways. Like, there is curvature in the curtain, all right? And the banana is gone. There are no other curves. Grab the candle, for me that's to better, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think we have an eggplant around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um... I would, in my non-corporeal self, try and move through it if I can. Or does it feel like solid? It just feels like rigid. It obviously would feel solid to you, despite having an incorporeal form. It would have the same vision to you again as if, you know, when smoke, like fog, hits the surface of water, like the lake in the early mornings, how it hits and then disperses your form would strike and disperse over the ripple. Gotcha. That's why, like, you know there's a ripple there because as you hit it, you resonate and ripple outwards. Gotcha. Um, I... You said the thing is, like, spinning and swirling, like, mm -hmm. above my abdomen. Yeah, uh, pulsing and growing. Use my appendages to try and feel the thing itself. Like, see if I can, like, touch it or... Yeah. Make another wisdom check. Eighteen. Eighteen? Yeah, I would say that you almost, now recognizing that you have something here, manifest a similar secondary appendage and immediately begin to root around in the area for what is your belly. 
and as that appendage makes contact with that surface for what you see growing and pulsing within you, again, a dark uh, amalgosphere, it almost looks now, as you are concentrated on it, as though, despite it being spherical, it looks as though it is a densely consummated liquid. So when you press against it, not that it wobbles like jello, but that, um, oh my god, Paul, you probably, the, What's up? it's the Euclidean solid is the, or the Newtonian solid for where it looks like it's liquid, but when pressure is applied, it solidifies. Oh, That's fuck. the Newtonian oh, one, right? Yeah, yeah non-Newtonian. No, non-Newtonian. Non-Newtonian, yeah. 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 <clears throat> it's similar to that. So it would look liquid, and then when you press it, you would immediately feel an incredibly dense sense of pressure resisting your hand as soon as you make like a little bit of contact and attempt to press against it. I'm just enshrouded in darkness. There's nothing else here, right? Yeah. Does it bother you, Laverna? That I was wise enough to leave the trappings you left for me? You didn't leave, dear. You were sent. And I'm very patient. Are you as patient as my mother was? Much more so. And much less foolish. What do you want with me? I'm sick of playing these games with you. I've played for long enough. Would you like me to be honest with you then, dear? If for once in your life you could. Make a persuasion check. Am I persuasive? (laughs) (laughs) Nope. It wasn't in the trick, no. Uh, it's a 13. In moments like this, it feels very fair. Don, roll it for me. I'm sorry for what's about to happen. <laughs> no! Don! <laughs> it's a 15 on God the God damn it, Don! <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you know what I need you to do. What I want from you. And if I refuse? Well... You have every right to. I don't control you. Did you know what was waiting for me when I went to Oshwamp and you let me leave? No, I do not see the future. But you knew of the dangers. Well, of course, but you're a strong girl, aren't you? Why was I not able to find you when I left the house? Because the hut is not our home. Where is our home? Nora. Uh, Laverna, why are you like this? (laughs) 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 Do you actually say why are you like this? No. Why are you like this? She just stands out. I would say that as the smoky appendage that attempted to almost grasp this orb starts to slightly fade as though you're recognizing finally that it was a reflection of your willpower that you were capable of manifesting this almost in the face of the antagonistic behavior that your aunt and your mother always used to propel you forward. And that there is, as your appendage drifts and fades away, as that willpower wanes, not as though you acquiesce against the request, but that that same forlorn weariness begins to set in that this is how it is. I don't think I can say no to her. Not acceptance, but the struggle. 
that appendage dissipates and fades and the smoky liquid within begins to disperse up through your body down through your core through your legs and I would say that you all would see Thoriel's smoky appearance shift to a dark black and blend in with the curtain around you and we would pull out of Thoriel's vision and who wants to volunteer next because Sarah's gone so we've only got two I'll go. <laughs> All right. Uh, I know you had said before you had a thought for Ethier's thing, but I don't know whether or not your mind has changed over the last week. But again, what do you think Ethier would be concentrated on? I think, given all of the like knowledge that he's gained about the uh, <laughs> what he was essentially being used for as like a beacon mm -hmm. for death, and despite accepting that. Um, and being okay with it, he would think back to the first time that he was, I think, shown this vision from the lovely woman that taught it to me. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Which presumably would be the day that my uncle yeah. went missing. Mm -hmm. A very easy transition, then. I will say. The same person. Yeah. <laughs> Laverna again. Hey, <laughs> I would say that as the last wisp of Thoriel's will fade into the curtain. Her will? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, no! Yeah. Those ripples within the curtain almost then disperse out and feel like the, th the slow swelling of dark black oceanic water. A stormy sky suddenly fills it overhead as you see that the vision almost like tilts in a two-dimensional perspective mm. where like you back up and it looks like you are actually looking down at water and as you're coming back up to an upright 90 degrees you would see this endless ocean out ahead of you and dark stormy clouds up above and you would see in these ripples as they swell and push aside there would be, again, that same slow, swelling, complex vortices of the whirlpool that swallowed your uncle's ship. And I will tell you that you would see, as it descends down and down and down, hundreds of feet into the dark water below, you would see that the ship is still intact. It's not as though it... It cracked or was split. You would see the mast, the stern, the bow, all of it intact. You would see no person standing on the deck. Save your uncle. Still manning the helm. Still hands affixed to the wheel. Almost looking downwards off the edges of the ship at each side. Curious to see, is there some trajectory for me to escape here? And then I would say you would hear a familiar voice. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, your teacher. I'm not wicked. I'm but a humble old lady. Oh, please keep that voice. <laughs> <laughs> it is I. Either you are a very strong and powerful man. I love her. It's <laughs> like the woman from Spongebob. That's Why, just what in are a they real chair. No idea who that is. Selling <laughs> chocolates. Yeah. I remember when they first made chocolates. Get me eat near the salt water and dries my throat out. I've been doing this for hundreds of I years. I love a Clemson frog. Is <laughs> <Gee>, Sylvan? <laughs> Bobby? Is it you? What are you doing here? Your uncle will rest for a day. <laughs> Please commit to it. I need you to commit to it. In a deep, watery grave. <laughs> It's starting, it's starting to get a little, uh, uh, it's a lot less subtle than I remember. <laughs> it's been tight shirts. Yeah, it's a little Gilbert Gottfried there. there. That was just that. What, what can we do? Do you have your mother's accent? <laughs> <laughs> but there is something that you can do for him. What is it? Oh my god, you're so young and virile. <laughs> 
She had a good This is how you remember. <laughs> <laughs> Body and able You're to so this. amazing. <laughs> oh. Look at how strong your legs are in particular. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your normal elven legs. <laughs> you could hoist many rowboats off the side of a sinking ship. Oh, Either did you crush on this woman? What is <laughs> yeah. it? I have a very important question in the yeah. midst of this vision. Yes. Do we feel each other's emotions at all? Um, is it like a because it's mm, like a semi melt thing? I right? would say yeah. Okay, good. You feel secondhand embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> There's she some weird like comfort that's radiating <laughs> out from you. You're like, oh, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just concern coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's good to see your face again. Concern. <laughs> <laughs> can still find his spirit to offer it some kind of peaceful rest. How can I accomplish this? Well, that's a very complicated thing, but if you would like to do some drugs with me back on the beach, <laughs> I can tell you more. Whoa. Drugception. <laughs> Double drugs. <laughs> oh, no. Drugs in a drug drug dream? <laughs> No, man. Spins the top. No. A second later. Look out of there, Ethier. Do it. Get tired from me, Lex, now, too. If it will help to locate his spirit. I don't think he's drowned just <laughs> He's still desperately clinging to life. He's got a couple life. minutes of air. But you and I should definitely begin the long walk back to the beach. All right. I found it. You guys get It's a very, uh... Noble task you're accepting, Ethan. Is it noble to just want to help someone? Oh, um, no. It's just very kind natured. <laughs> See what is really dense today. <laughs> she drinking it? <laughs> My throat is so dry, let me just. <laughs> You think I know better for being a literal sea hag? <laughs> and being his teacher! I'm in a very human environment, hell! <laughs> I'm struggling to maintain the facade of an elven woman. Yes, let me once again manifest legs to walk on land. <laughs> <laughs> you would look over and like you see her as you normally did. It doesn't look like she's manifesting yeah. legs. She just looks like a fucking wonky old lady, yeah. <laughs> just covered in fucking seaweed and shit. Yeah, you know, rags. Yeah, she was. Just, that's how she was. Yeah, <laughs> weird old. I want you to know that this is the lady. fucking lady from SpongeBob. We keep saying you sound like <laughs> so the idea of her manifesting legs. It's just like it's, it's very true. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and then you would you would watch as she would take a few steps and it would feel like she literally walks and as she takes a step off of water that if there is a sudden and immediate juxtaposition to where there is a shift and she steps on land she steps on the, the, the wet surface of the beach right at the edge of the dock and then just places her hand on one of the like wooden pillars that um, the vertical ones for uh, the constructor of the dock. She just kind of stops and looks back over at you. You better not uh, delay too long out in the water, Ethier. Water is uh, not the most forgiving thing. I can see that. Your uncle be well. Well, he'll be okay. At least his, his spirit is in good hands with you. Let's do the drugs. You'll figure it out on <laughs> in better circumstances. And you would see that she just climbs up slowly on the dock, like crawls, like the girl from the <laughs> ring out of the well. <laughs> More concerned. <laughs> I, I have a question. Yep. We are witnessing the boat sinking. Yeah. And this woman can move through water however she pleases. Yep. Concern. Okay. <laughs> yep. Additional concerns. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not the most uh, familiar with uh, climbing things. I'm sorry, Ethia. Could you come sit with me on the dock? Of course. 
Oh, yeah, I'll climb up on the dock. This is like going there. to be a moment that this will change your life around. scarier than yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and you would see that she would pull out a small, very dark driftwood bowl that you can see has already been, like, smoke-stained, so this mm-hmm. way it's got that external sealant, like, the, the wood has been exposed to fire. You know, it's cracked and chipped some places, and it's got little, like, wooden, um, you know, two little, like, wooden, or three little, like, wooden legs, so this way it stands. He places it on the you know, edge of the dock, and it's just looking out over. Oh, yeah, you probably really should hurry. The water's actually beginning to close in on the whirlpool. Yeah, I, I climbed up on that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the sake of it, oh, I know you're yeah, climbing sure, as well, sure, but like, sure, sure, sure. you moving across this theoretical space is yeah. obviously slower than her. Yeah, but absolutely. This is still a memory. Yep. But, yeah, you would sit down across from her, and she would just start throwing a little bit of, like, to her, they would be wet. Like, they would mm. be slightly dampened herbs. She would be throwing them in a bowl. And then she would place her hands over them. And you would see, instead of fire that emerges from hers, it's almost like a thin blue... There is a hue around the edges of her fingers as it envelops the bowl, and you would see that there would be almost like a thin blue spray of oceanic water that would extend out from her fingers and again dampen them hmm. we're gonna muddle these up and uh you're gonna have some good tea and she takes out a mortar and begins to oh it's squishy <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be the thickest tea you've ever had in your life Ethier, but you'll never be the same again you say that what what does that mean you'll never be the same again <laughs> yes why is that? Well, you're a growing man, Ethier, and you're about to embark on a very uh, specific kind of journey. But you have done this before? Drugs oh, yes. Drugs Traumatized. Drugs. Drugs. Would you like fresh water or salt water for the tea? <laughs> Does it make a difference? Uh, it's a, about how parched you are. Salt if you're extra parched. <laughs> fresh, fresh water. Fresh yes, water yes. it is. Okay. Oh, Evie. <laughs> I'm triggered. <laughs> oh, these old bones don't have much fresh left in them. And you would see that in the small little cup of the brazier, she would manifest like a little yeah. uh, <laughs> bit of very clear fresh water. She seems to wither a little bit more. Oh. God. Okay. Last to me. Did she just wring her hands out? Yep. <laughs> yeah, you gotta leave me a drink up. <laughs> she is an elf, right? You're learn magic. <laughs> her hair is fucking wild. You can't really see her elven ears. She would have other, like, moderately elven features in terms of, you know, pointed chin and stuff like that. But her elves, her elvish ears her are currently... Her, elf, like, her elvish crazy. ears are like, currently... <laughs> Uh, disguised <laughs> by her hair. And yeah, no, she just picks up. Oh, go ahead. Just drink this? <laughs> yep. Again, it's gonna be a little viscous. Uh, my herbs are usually a lot drier, but we were just in the water. You understand. All right. Goopy leaves. Oh, oh you're so gullible, my young man. <laughs> <laughs> she just places a hand on your shoulder. Forgive me for this curse that I have embarked you upon. You're a good soul, Ethier. <laughs> <laughs> you will not remember this for quite some time. Your vision of me shall be uh, forever changed. What do you mean? I'll just drink the rest of the shit, you dumb kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm only fooling you, Aethia. You're a very kind soul. The world is going to be very evil and wicked, and you're not going to be able to stop it. None of us can. But you'll at least be there to do some good for the dead. Like I did. Except mine was out at sea. You're going to go up to some snowy, weird place and... Get your legs burnt and stuff. <laughs> Watch Wait, out! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, concern, concern. What is this? Watch out for uh, you know uh, fiery pits and stuff like that. Green guys. All right. <laughs> how, 
How am I supposed to help people? Drink up. <laughs> <laughs> You're not high enough yet, Ether. It's not going to make sense until you're fully in the trip. Okay. <laughs> Drink more. Yeah, I would say this would have been consumed last. It would have been the driftwood bowl. I was just sipping my coffee here. Drink up, boy. Like, <laughs> Faster. <laughs> Dumb yeah. kid. That last again in the same way it was described ages ago. Sinesgrim by Desiel. That last almost slurry like feeling like a worm down your throat. Just unpleasant at the bottom. Like, the, the front of it just tasted like water. Yeah. But that, that last little drop, like, oh no, I feel like I've swallowed something. Something with density, something with mass. A viscous, again, almost... It's not actually wriggling, it's not a living thing, but like... <laughs> you know. like, like an oyster? Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, an oyster would actually be a great comparison. Uh, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. sure. And just immediate feeling of like, oh... I don't think it's actually something that we ever truly talked about previously in the creation of Ether. I know we had a discussion for where the clerical side of magic came from in terms of a, an incidental and accidental discovery when mm-hmm. healing Malo out in the snow. Yep. Do you think Ether would have ever had any, before this moment, previous penchant for magic? I don't think so. Neither do I. Yeah, I would think is that sinks down through your throat and almost begins to settle in you. I have given to you the last of me, Ethan. My magic is yours now. But I do not know what I am doing. That's okay. That's part of life, Ethan. None of it really makes sense. There's no tragic story written by some very sad author who's trying to figure shit out. It's just people doing things. Not all of it's gonna make sense to you. Especially the fiery pit thing. That was me just throwing a dart at a dartboard. (laughs) You could also drown in the water out there if you're an idiot and you decide to go try to just swim to the bottom and find your uncle's corpse. He's dead now. (laughs) (laughs) I can feel it. You too will be drawn to death. Simply because you do not want people to linger in it. It is but a part of life. A part in a great circle. Your uncle at the bottom of that whirlpool, while his body may have died, his soul is not dead. His spirit has just returned momentarily as a rock at the bottom of the ocean, but over time, well, depending on how deep he is, he might be settled there for a very long time. But there will be swells of water that will move him. And he might again reach the sky. So I cannot help him. You can't help everyone, Ethan. Try as you might. As I said, a noble task. Quite a foolish one. But it isn't hubris that drives you. (laughs) It's kindness. Tell me what I must do, and I will do it. If I tell you what to do, then it would be my will, not yours. It's up to you to figure out your path. For now, I'm gonna go back into the ocean and probably dissolve. <laughs> it's been a good life, Ethier. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the salt water. <laughs> uh, thank you for this. Uh... Curse? Oh, you're quite. Uh, <laughs> blessing. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Most people are not so blessed to come right. back at all. From where? Death. But I did not die. Sure you didn't, Ethan. 
No, you didn't. <laughs> she <laughs> like turns and starts scrawling towards the other edge of the dock and towards the ocean. Yeah, you would just see her old, you know, tattered, like, gray stained dress that, you know, like, runs over the back of her legs and her feet as she just slowly starts to crawl like a fish out of water back towards the ocean. I would, I would go help her. Oh, yeah, that would be very good. Just yeah. go get <laughs> Kick her off the dock. Sweet. <laughs> How would you help her? Uh, I mean, I would just, like... <laughs> Back to the sea, <laughs> bitch! Yeah, yeah, like, it's it's like Mario swinging Bowser. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, I, I would reach out my hand to her. Yeah, she would kind of, you know, almost clumsily as though she's losing motor control and function. Just reach up and, you know, as her hand like hits yours, you would feel... Obviously, the solid mass of her flesh, but like a splash of water would wash out from her flesh over your hand and your wrist. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, very little left to hold on to without magic. That is okay. I will help you. Know, you know, I used to be a mermaid back in the day. I was the most beautiful one in the whole sea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is that where you wish to go again? Uh, yes, please. If you could just kindly... Um, I respect it's going to be difficult to carry water with your bare hands if you don't mind just uh, shoving me off. <laughs> will you become a mermaid again? No, I will die. And I will become the water that I was born from. And then I will be born again sometime. Not as me, though. Can I help your spirit once you die? You may try. But I will immediately discoporeate. You'll have to try to scoop a little bit of me up and... Needle in a haystack, Ethan. Whatever those are. I'm a woman. <laughs> From the water. I'm a woman. And no, not of needles and or haystacks. <laughs> of the water. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the second half of the sentence was this. I'm a woman. <laughs> I don't know shit about fuck. I'm a woman. <laughs> of the water, Ethan. For the love of God. Uh... Thank you. I will do all that I can. I know. Have faith, buddy. You're gonna do just fine. Thank you. Thank you. Push <laughs> <laughs> Oh wait, I can't swim! <laughs> it was all a lie! You committed murder! <laughs> She pops back up out of the water, takes the wig off. We got him! <laughs> she was a cop! I've been undercover for 38 years, Evie. Even though you're 22 at this point. You're under arrest for stealing magic. <laughs> Murder, magic stealing. Yeah, no, Drugs. I would say that in the dark, everything. pitch black surface of the water <laughs> where you... Oh, she, you would see that as she strikes, she does genuinely dissipate quite quickly where she hits, sinks, you see that very like you know, Jack with the Titanic as she starts to sink and descend the darkness around her looming closes in. But you would see her form almost like haze like John C. Goodbye. You only see the distant <laughs> candle <laughs> pan. <Yeah. laughs> but like the, rip the ripples in the waves would blend in with her flesh and you would see it almost looks like she dissolves slightly as she sinks. Taking bounce on again a fully aquatic visage. Transparent. And then nothingness. And then we've got Paul and Tara left. Who would the two of you like to go? I guess I'll go. Tara? Yeah. Okay. What do you think in this moment Ritora would be thinking of? What do you think she would want to see? 
Um. Eat it one more thing, I fucking eat you. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see me. C- Cena. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, John C. Hag. <laughs> John did C. Hag. <laughs> I. I mean, I, I think she'd probably be thinking of. So much has happened, but the. Yeah. I think the the recent departure of Nesgrim from the group, as well as a lot of the other uh, friendly faces that they had been mm-hmm. kind of traveling with for an extended period, um, would have her in the mindset of that sense of loss that she felt both from her parents, mm-hmm. a band like essentially disowning her and the betrayal from, mm. from yeah, Delwyn. Yeah, like the <clears throat> two kind of driving mm-hmm. <laughs> moments in, in her history. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that's... Okay. I would say the darkness of the water would transition and transpose into the dark soil at the base of some of the trees within the Avith woods. You would hear the familiar voice once again of Delowin over your shoulder, kind of observing where you are knelt down. You know, your spiritual form knelt down, looking at this parted area in the desecrated earth below you, attempting to observe the roots of a healthy tree, an otherwise healthy tree. And Delwyn's voice would quietly ring out. <clears throat> Strange that it bothers the earth so deeply and so aggressively but yet cannot take root within the tree. And you would hear your own voice almost emanate out from within you. <clears throat> Garbled speech, unclear to you. A memory that you know you have. Make a wisdom check. The garbled speech would almost decipher, like, over time as it feels as though it echoes, it grows clearer and clearer, like, like the Doppler effect, that speed and that frequency, that cadence to where it once again matches in harmony and rhythm with your voice. sentence from long ago from her Torah. It must not be from this plant. I would hear Delowin once again almost confusedly say as though it's brought here to see if it can sustain itself here but from somewhere else. Earth almost used in place of traditional fertile soil. That's terrifying. You can see there would be no whatsoever movement of uh, any, you know, anticipated like worms or other very mm-hmm. small like insectile life within the soil. <clears throat> it would give off that same stagnant odor of slightly rotting flesh. You would see Delowin just standing there, confused. And you knew this man 
very well after working with him for two decades, roughly. You've seen him bothered before. You have seen him confused. You've seen him concerned. For the first time, you would see a strange, contorted anger and bitterness in his visage. He would pull the same little notebook that he always took notes in and begin to chart something down within it. Vitor, I need you to do something very specifically and very carefully for me. I need you to peel back some of the bark of the tree. Make a wisdom check. 18. I would say, in the same way for Thoriel, similarly, dark appendages of smoke kind of exude out from you, and then they almost twist and shape into your actual arms. Not that you're entering your body, but with this being so much more aligned with memory, it feels like you're entering back into that old self. And you take a a small carving knife and begin to work through one of the strips of vein within the bark itself. And as you strip away a few exterior calloused pieces of the bark, get the blade in with the point and begin to angle it to open the bark ever so slightly, you feel Deluin's hand grasp at your elbow. No. No, you need to do no more. It is too late for the tree. And you would feel his hand ever so gently, slightly pull yours back, and he would look at your fingers. At the edges of the fingertips for where the blade, like you would have had your fingers holding onto the bark, right at that precipice for where they would have almost slightly began to curl around the bark to hold it and extrude it from the tree itself, you would see that the edges of your fingertips are stained in like a dark black ashy substance, like had they been run over with charcoal. Mm -hmm. You would see that he very swiftly pulls a cloth from his side pouch and begins to vigorously rub at your hand and look at your fingertips. No bother. Just another dead tree, sadly. But that's enough for today. Pay no mind. Does the tree look dead? You said that the tree was okay. Yeah, the tree looks okay. And how far back was the bark peeled? Could you actually, from this vision, see anything? No, it was like you were beginning to work Mm -hmm. it, and as you started to, like, crack it, he stopped you. I think that... I think that our work here is done for the day. Thank you for all you've done. There are some very important people that I must inform some things of. I think it's best if you get some rest. And you would see that he would elevate you back to your feet, still holding onto your hand, still very fixatedly looking at your hand, like at the edges of your fingers, tips, making sure that he cleaned them completely. Hmm. Stay safe. No matter what happens. It's a very scary job we're doing, but nature deserves the protection that we can offer it. It is always sad to grieve the loss of another good tree, though. You would see that he would turn and begin to walk away from the tree. Back into the distance, back towards Feyorn, where you two were staying. And he would call out to you from the distance, Please do not linger. This is a conversation I remember 
I mean, on snippets, yeah. I mean, you guys worked together for 20 Mm -hmm. years. Like, this wasn't such a momentous thing that it would immediately stand out to Ratora as, oh, this is the worst thing we ever saw or ever happened Mm -hmm. to us in the 20 years that we were doing this. Just another day. Just another day. I don't know whether or not he was angry or bitter at the sense of failure or what. But I would say you would linger there for a moment. Just a few seconds. And for the first time, for Ratora, it would feel almost like there is in the area for where the bark had been split and the underneath of the tree had been slightly exposed that once again mirrored stench of rotting flesh that you get from the desecrated earth almost slowly begins to waft out from the tree What do you think Ratora would have done? I think she she respects uh, Delowin and would not want to directly go against what he said. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she would without uh, without touching the tree again would linger a bit longer than normal and observe any kind of change in the mm-hmm. area that she was uh, beginning to pry back. Okay. Yeah. I would say that as you stand and a few moments pass It would seem almost like the same way you can see from a gentle breeze leaves rustle. It would be strange from the inside of a tree for there to be an echoing slow whistle. The bark ever so slightly jostles with the wind. And you feel no wind around you. The sound is coming from the tree? Mm Mm-hmm. Sounds like it's very distant coming from within the gap in the bark. She, she's not really sure what Delowin is always writing down in this notebook. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine that she wouldn't have acquired one of her own. Yeah. Um, so I think she would write down that observation. Mm-hmm. And would try to get as as close as she's comfortable to this to this gap and Mm -hmm. it's she she noticed the concern that Delwyn had for the part of her Mm -hmm. that had touched this tree she's not going to sure she's not going to touch it but the she's not going to walk away from what mm-hmm. might be a new discovery Certainly. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And it was just the two of them mm -hmm. out here? Yes. And the the soil, how far does that spread? Is it just centered around this one single tree? Centered around tree? the tree, and I would say that it extends roughly a foot from the base of the trunk. And I would say that the gash that you made in the bark was roughly two inches. Um, I think she would uh, measure that gash, mm -hmm. make note of it, make note of the sound. Mm -hmm. And despite Delon saying not to linger too long, um, that's pretty vague. Mm -hmm. And I think she would take a step back a bit from this tree and just sit and observe any changes that might happen over the period of I'd say an hour. Okay. Sire, what's your passive perception? And then I will need to know everyone else's passive perceptions as well. <sighs> passive Incredibly perception large. is 17. Twenty-three. Oh. Fifteen. One. Twelve. Joe. Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, I'll fight you, Peters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Everybody look. Uh, yeah, actually, weirdly enough, everybody does peep. <laughs> Somehow, Vertor in the moment, I guess, was too affixed to watching this bark. I would say that through the course of this hour, you are sat maybe, you know, six, eight feet mm -hmm. away or so, distant enough to where you don't feel like you are in the danger zone of anything that might occur, but also still proximate enough that you can really acutely watch that gash in the bark. Now... The Avith Woods are uh, a very uh, simple oaken forest. Nothing strange about it. Through the course of the hour, you would see, you know, sporadic fauna, deer, rabbits, squirrels, you know, some birds and things like that, all passing through the area undisturbed. However, they would all avoid the area of Ratora and this tree, so, like, they would wave around it. Probably because they're dodging the person standing here, or sat here for some time. I would say that after roughly half an hour or so, you guys would all see in this spiritual projection, in the distance in the area from where Delowin left and walked away towards a distant city, you guys would see Delowin returning and stopping at a distance as he recognizes that Ritora is still here. And you would see him maybe from about 80 feet or so away when he like can clearly get a decent view through the weave of some of the trees, stop, and then sigh visibly, turn, and walk away. I would say over the course of that hour, the bark itself would have no changes. It's not like it breaks further or grows out in any ripples or anything mm -hmm. like that. Nothing comes from it. Just that same pretty consistent I I think at that point with no changes, I think she would decide to head back. Mm -hmm. um, 
report the weird noise mm -hmm. to Delowin and then retire for the day. Yeah. I would say it's as you're walking back that suddenly it clicks for you. You see Delowin pulling earth from the ground and two men standing there at a different tree. And you would see Delowin look despondent at your presence. You were supposed to rest. And you would feel the dense thud of a staff hitting you on the head. And we would jump to Paul. As that white stark line of unconsciousness sets in. What do you think Felix would be thinking of? Uh, coming down from his uh, minor anxiety attack about mm -hmm. his experience, mm -hmm. he'd mostly be thinking about the experience leaving Whitehall and paying attention to uh, I don't know, seeing the, the cosmos with being in it rather mm -hmm. than being yeah. on a planet. Yeah. Um, you'd be thinking of how everything is connected mm -hmm. and kind of his mind's kind of racing. So he's, he's thinking yeah. about everything being connected and he's thinking about what he read in Whitehall and how his experience w could relate to the creation of the weave mm -hmm. and what it was like before Mistra did so. Sure. Yeah, I would say that that white kind of ringing sound and sight as Rotora's consciousness is ripped from us as she is struck in the head. Then quickly expands out into a vacuum of colors, a prismatic sea. Seeing stars? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I would say that for you all, this is very strange it's fitting because still present here you are all in ethereal forms you do not maintain or manifest anything material of yourself you all would see within this great comparable to what you have witnessed river that ascends in the distance as it projects and fills and floods with color it's It's beautiful. It's strangely beautiful. This ever filling, flowing area. It almost feels like. I mean, I don't think it's unfair to say Oshwamp would have had snow globes in terms of various little trinkets and things that would have been decorated. It almost feels like you witness Felix suspended in a snow globe falling slowly through this rainbowish river, this prism of color. As he descends, you would see that he also, despite looking physical, it appears as though he blends in with the area around him. So like when you have, um, for the people that, you know, like use watercolors and you do the like splotching stuff where it gets like muddled, you would see Felix's green almost like it's splotched over with various other colors, pinks and oranges and yellows. And it's as though Felix's own green itself isn't being covered over, but like it's leaking out and joining the colors that are staining over him, almost intertwining with them not mixing, intertwining. And the more Felix falls, the more that physical feeling of Felix fades into just being almost a brilliant, transparent sheen. There is still a slight glimmer to Felix's overall shape, but it feels very similar to the sheen that you all have in your incorporeal forms. I would say from what Felix has read and what Felix has learned and what Felix understands of magic, of spirit, 
and from the journals discussing fonts of magic, fonts of raw mana. That it is all just spirit. And you think of what it would have been like before this Mistra would have made the weave. And it's as you're falling and looking back out at the sea of stars around you that star study was never Felix's concentration within school. But after Melithel showed him really what it means to move a star... I think it clicks that it's not that he's moving it with his will. It's not magic that makes the move. It's a connection. When Melithel went fishing, it wasn't that he actually threw anything magical out. It was just him picking something in the stars and connecting with it and asking it to move that there is still all around you in this spirit world this spiritual projection every single one of these stars is a spirit made manifest I would also think in the midst of all this it had been asked before if Felix heard anything previously I think this would be the first time as Felix attempts to concentrate on that element specifically in the same projection for a Doppler-like effect, but slightly different, a low humming like a lullaby, wordless but a very sweet cadence, and a voice that would sound very similar to your mother's. I would think it would be that sweet, serene tranquility of your mother's lullaby as you feel yourself falling awash with all these raw, intense, deeply embedded moments and feelings and emotions within you. Make an intelligence check. Fifteen. I think Felix is an inquisitive man, and I think the moment would hit Felix in the midst of a lullaby. If what Felthul says is true, could the opposite be as well? And I would say you all would see the last remnants of Felix dissipate and fade out. That sheen like, again, glistening, obviously we joke that he's always wet, but like that glistening <laughs> sheen of Felix would suddenly and swiftly wave and glimmer and like a ripple and then a small, ever so tiny, like a supernova exploding in a small concentrated mass and a litany of stars from Felix's body would once again slowly waft out and also join back into that sea of color that sea of stars and I would say that in the midst of that explosion and in the midst of that color think everybody would fall off into a much deeper sleep. Well, let's say we would awaken the next morning. Rested. Definitely rested. <laughs> Epith Ariel. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> it's 
Eleven. Eleven. Yeah. It's over ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when does it win? I would say that as you as you start to stir from the sleep. Now again, we all kind of like puddled once again into a fucking igloo. <laughs> you would feel like as you're moving a certain sense of stiffness in your joints. Unfamiliar to you. A sense of incredible, almost statuesque pose as movement feels not quite natural anymore as when you attempt to rotate your shoulders or articulate the joints in your fingers as though they are slowed. You're telling me I'm getting arthritis? (laughs) You're crunchy. It's that it. You slept in an igloo. What'd you Mm. expect? Cold's bad for my bones. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like as if I'm like, it's becoming more difficult to move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all awaken. <sighs> Just the five of you in the igloo. Mm. Yeah, the other two are in the other igloo. Well, the rest of them, right? Yeah, oh yeah, the rest of them are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Veer. Yes. What do you want to do for breakfast? <laughs> um... Uh, I could make some sort of uh, urban meat scramble. We have some left over. Okay. Why do you folks insist on doing these drug things? Hmm? I just... Uh, I, I don't know if it's the, the herb. It just first time <laughs> just drink a lot of water <laughs> I can't escape it um these seem so unpleasant why they're not always unpleasant yours was in particular I, I am going to have to disagree with you I've never had a pleasant moment with any of these now I just it must have been the way I was laying perhaps I just I don't feel like myself in what way Movement is its very uncomfortable. That's like, very like strange. Your skin's too tight. Yeah, say that. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you did absolutely I look at her. Yeah. Yeah. Like my, my joints have turned to lead. Mm-hmm. I have metal legs. <laughs> you don't have to flex. Mm. <laughs> he can. <laughs> you have legs. Damn. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would say we've looked at her before, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me and all my friends. Yeah. Lots of hands. Yeah. Yeah. All, the, yeah. all my friends are here. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would Hams. say that obviously she still looks like her. However, you know, <laughs> the, the litany of hands yep. that erupt from within the sleeves almost seem like they are now moved around her. Like her torso, her abdomen. Big old hug. Squeezing. He didn't see hands before, though. Right? Benjamin did. Right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. That it would seem like there's arms out of the sleeves that are gripping her. Like, at her waist, at her torso. Like, six sets of arms moving up her body from her waist up to, like, her shoulders. <laughs> squeezing her. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if this is an effect of the the herb. I just uh, I feel so tense. I just uh. um. Do you feel loved? <laughs> <laughs> just think back to the dream sequence I just experienced. Just well, not particularly. Now that you mention it, quite well, the opposite. The, the All of the hands that exist in your sleeves, those weird skeletal hands that Benjamin spoke of, mm-hmm. uh, they are currently wrapped around your torso. Wonderful. Like a 
I don't know what a mummy is. <laughs> no. Okay. Like a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> I've just made it up. <laughs> I've been inventing I'm going things. to call it mummy. <laughs> How do I get them to stop? I just, I hate this feeling. Uh, my department? Uh, Does, how uh, how many the, hands? Um, Six sets of hands. It's just that's wrapping up your torso. And I no like, longer have ribs, they're just arms. <laughs> okay, so they would look like they're hugging her from behind. Yeah. So like, But from out of the sleeves? Like, are they coming out? So, like, if her arms, arms are, are like, down back. at her yeah. side, you would see them, like, out of the sleeves, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. One and, set, and, another set yeah. above, another set above. Wrap my arms around myself. Either do I look like a spider? <laughs> <laughs> Not, not unlike not, not unlike a spider. Give me your arms. I need to look like a spider. I need another set. I think you look enough like a spider <laughs> already. Um, they are quite literally wrapped around your torso from out of your sleeves. Is, is there an ailment for this? How do I make this stop? I might be able to try something. I don't know if it'll work. For the um, necklace of prayer beads. Yeah. Uh, does it does it require the material components or uh, if the um, spell consumes them yeah. okay <laughs> never mind unless we have diamond dust worth at least a hundred gold make sure. I think we I think we sold most of the, the gems we got right or used them mm -hmm. diamond We get the ice diamonds that she makes that explode. Yeah, but they don't... I don't think I have them anymore. You can I have one. Uh, didn't we all take jars of it? Yeah, but I think they kind of like... After we left. I'm pretty sure. I don't... I don't remember. I don't know. Mr. DM would. Mm -hmm. In one sec. I've got this bag full of diamonds. Can I do with that? <laughs> yeah, there's there's nothing in the wording saying that it doesn't require the material components. A large vial with a slice of widow's whale bark. Man, I just <laughs> <laughs> like a salve. <laughs> Get off of me! <laughs> I got a spiked collar with a length of chain. <laughs> I don't think that's going to help. No, <laughs> this one, right. you know better. Some material from the oh, that's the thing I was going to ask. Where did you get that from? It was on Sabrina. Oh, she's what? She's the having beads. difficulty moving. Uh, not, she doesn't have freedom of movement with only, extended limbs. Could you put this on? I'll just... Well, I it only uses a trash of that bead. My brain also jumps to it with the bear trap that I have with a length of chain. Yeah, I mean, I obviously am trying to find an official reward. Yeah. I use it so infrequently that I'm I'm not sure. I mean, Jeremy Crawford's kind of unreliable at times, but yeah, I would say. <laughs> I didn't jump fuck off. Yeah, no, I would say you'd be able to. I would say that it wouldn't require any of the components. Then. And then what was the second question? Oh, um, the frost diamond stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, we still have those, right? I From... thought they had I thought like they were dissipated. Uh, like... They melt. Yeah. Oh, they melt. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do they melt into? Back into water. Oh, okay. So I've just had a pouch of water. Yep. Mm -hmm. You just have a wet pocket. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, thank you. Yeah. So I will um pull out my my necklace. Of prayer beads mm -hmm. uh, that was gifted to me by one Arthur Hartwood. Mm -hmm. Which Arthur? Good man. Are you telling me you were gifted this Great by Arthur man. Hartwood? Great man. <laughs> one might say. I mean, we used it before. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. He did give me those really nice wings. Um. <laughs> you give me a great horn that I love. I don't. I don't know if it'll work. Of evasion. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take any kind of relief I can. Um. You love the horn. <laughs> <laughs> I killed two of my I friends. killed two of my very good great friends with it. This is my favorite item. 
I've been <laughs> <laughs> murdered. I can't wait for you to use it again. <laughs> there will be a time when it'll come in use. And I'm going to use it. And you're going to use it. And you're going to be like, I actually fucking love this love one. <laughs> this is the greatest thing I've ever been given. <laughs> and you'll get to it. <laughs> can't be like, why do I have this? Sorry, what are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm going to cast Greater Restoration on... Uh-huh. On Thoriel. Okay. Um, Choosing. You have to choose. It's... Uh... I... There's, there's, there's two that I'm, like, on the uh-huh. fence of. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I know. Because <laughs> one is one effect that charmed or petrified the target. Mm-hmm. And one curse, including the target's attunement to a cursed magic item. Mm-hmm. So I'll either be cursed or petrified. No, you either are cursed or petrified. <laughs> I, I'm going to cast this restoration spell so I can petrify. Petrify. <laughs> you want to be cursed or do you want to be rocked? My choice is worse. Hi. That sounds like a curse. I'm going to let the, 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 the fates decide. I got a mm-hmm. rock. <laughs> I'll go with a, D, a D4. We don't... What's what? Um. So... Charmed or petrified will be... Uh, one or three. And mm-hmm. then the cursed one will be two or four. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a four, so it's the curse. Okay. So, greater restoration. <laughs> this is the wrong one. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I mean, the spell requires no components, meaning no somatic, no material, no verbal. So, you just, like, take this prayer bead off. Uh, I forget what... One greater restoration is for which bead? Uh, it was... Because they were different colors. They were different kinds of beads. It's called Favor. Neat. We'll say blue. (laughs) That's what I was thinking. (laughs) Yeah, why not? Blue. Wait, couldn't she fix your legs? (laughs) 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 I don't think that was... I guess... (laughs) <laughs> it's great well, restoration. I like, I like feeling horrible. <laughs> Shh, hang on, I'm getting hugged. <laughs> you need to solve this crisis first. You used lesser restoration on me before, right? Yeah. I've used lesser restoration on okay. you. I've used greater restoration on um, Nesgrim. When Nesgrim. He was... We're about to have a lot of skeletons come out of her sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> when Nesgrim was like... When he was turned to stone... Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. The time he was petrified. Oh, yeah. fuck, well, that's yeah. right, he literally got petrified. <laughs> he got to do the thing. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, so I mean, I will say that you take this uh, <laughs> prayer bead and you're just like, hey, like maybe this will work. You're getting, I don't know, your soul's getting squeezed um. by some <laughs> soul arms. Maybe that's a curse. Soul arms. Seems like a curse to me. Sounds like a curse. It sounds like, I mean, listen, Laverna made it pretty evident that she did something to fuck me up. Yeah. And whether that was trauma or a curse, <laughs> I've got beads to hopefully Why help. not both? Yeah. It sounds like Can both. you read <laughs> the one about the curse effect again? Mm-hmm. If I can find it, I certainly will. That would be great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can you relieve me of the curse of childhood trauma? No. 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 Only no. Uh, can uh, <laughs> we no, can take well, your no. memory. Mm-hmm. Um, it is one curse, including the target's attunement to a cursed magic item. Fantastic. I'd like to cast that. I will say that as she takes this bead, casts this spell upon you, for the first time, there is this awash sense of alleviation. And then a sudden sensation of tension in your skull in your face where like you know if, if you've ever had like lockjaw where you get that feeling of like oh god every time i get a migraine i love this and i will say <laughs> you feel for the first time as that strikes you so suddenly and then is a wash and swiftly fades tension release from the height of your head and you guys would see that for the area for where the indentations for the crown on your head almost begins to soften and break. And you would hear these, you know, small little 
like the scrapings and chips of metal striking itself. There's a crumples on your head. <laughs> a lot of dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that pressure within you is released. Immediately. Yeah, I pull the veil completely off. Yeah, you... Yeah, you begin to feel at your head. There are a lot of sharp little <laughs> things. Ah! Oh, no! Why did you curse me, Ratora? What have you done? I'm Why obviously not like patting yeah. my head. I'm just like feeling it. Rub your, rub your tongue, pat your head. <laughs> Jumping up and down. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would say that the my crown itself has broken. Like it's shattered. So that's why there are shards of little bits of metal. Shards of winter, get them! (laughs) Stretch a little bit. Yeah, feels good. (laughs) Big old hug. I've never in my life felt this much relief. You feel six arms. (laughs) (laughs) She's a spider! Kill her! She's a beast! Whoa, I'm an insect. There's six arms. It's fine. Uh, is that oh six God. arms including your own or in no, addition seven. to? Seven! Seven! <laughs> it's six and then mine. Seven arms? You only have one? Sets! Oh, sets oh, okay. of. Sets. That would be 14 full arms. Six arc. sets of arms? <laughs> yes! Yeah, she's a goddamn millipede! Fuck <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's check, check, bump check, bump check! <laughs> Fireball! <laughs> That's why I say I needed your sets of arms because then I would have I eight, and then I'd be a spider. Yeah. Yeah. Cut to, <laughs> he's got a ring of evasion. He's right. Cut to Arthur Woo! walking out onto like his parapet in the morning to drink his first cup of coffee, and he's just like, ah, "It's a good morning to be a hardwood." And you just hear, <laughs> "Oh, the spider!" So you see the igloo fly, <laughs> maintaining its shape just on the air. Well, that's seven more problems off of my list this morning. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, you hung for Torah. There's, yeah, no, weird, hug. there's no actual weird feeling. That was just funny. <laughs> okay. What? I holster my Did it, gun. it work? <laughs> it, 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 what what happened? I don't know. I don't know what it did, but I've never felt relief like this in my entire life. I have I feel lighter. I feel freer. I, thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. What? I think I broke some sort of curse, but what? I'm not quite sure. I I thought it was just what happened because of the vision. I. Rachar, I'm not sure what you did. I've had these. I've had this crown my entire life. I don't know what you did to stop this, but it. Whatever it, you did, it worked. Something it's... within the crown. Ether, can you see anything? I can open your eyes. Ether, open cast your eyes. Mending and slap. <laughs> 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 Say mending? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, she's a witch. <laughs> Ether's a villain again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I bestow <laughs> curse. <laughs> There's a legitimate reason for that to cross your mind. <laughs> My half ending. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pull the eye. Uh, and... Yeah, no, you see her. No weird, no weird, no <laughs> weird, terrifying arms or anything. Just, just, just the two. Yeah, just her arms. Regular crazy arms. <laughs> like a... Do I see <laughs> anything else? Is there anything in the space where the arms were and the sleeve? Is there anything on her no. head? Nothing. She just looks exactly as I see her. Yeah. Do you look normal? It's no arms. Just no arms? <laughs> <laughs> what are these? <laughs> Just your two normal arms. No additional arms. My nails are still the same length, though, correct? Yeah. Okay. Oh, why? These puppies ain't going nowhere. <laughs> yeah, like, they're completely, like, gone no. now, right? The, like, shards and scraps of metal? Mm-hmm. I mean, it would depend. Well, I mean, they, like, they would just fall into her hair, yeah. but there's no, like, there's no they, like, protrusions. protrusions. Yeah, no protrusions or anything, no. I'm gonna pull a piece of it to me. Yeah. Small fragment. Yeah. It would feel like cold, weathered iron. Are you touching it with your hands? Like uh, yeah, I float it over to myself, and then I grab oh, it. Oh, okay. No, iron, okay. Oh, I am. <laughs> 
picking the pieces up over here. I hate this. Force has gone full I... ape. <laughs> <laughs> Force don't eat any of it. Don't eat. Did you already eat? Spit it out. <laughs> Matora, hold him down. <laughs> His gums! <laughs> You can't stop me from reading it. You guys are dumb. I'll, I'll, I'll feel good. Guys, I eat in the middle. You don't know what that was? I, I, I was born like this. I've always had That these. seems highly unlikely. <laughs> well, I mean, I wasn't born in the traditional method, so... Yes, that is when I was. I've had these as long as I can remember. Yeah, you would have remembered having them as a little girl. Like your earliest memories is like a three and four year old kid. You would have always worn your little crown. In the same way that humans and elves and every other being are probably born with fingernails, it was just a part of me. Are you sure that you were created? Well, I wasn't there, so I can't really speak. But that is what Laverna told you. Weren't we all created? Yes, but <laughs> by some oh, sort of the... unnatural means. I mean, I do not... Dirty. <laughs> Sinister. I was informed the left hand. by something in a prior episode that, um, yeah, I, you were made. that I was made, yeah. not so much like. Conceived. Do we remember the context for that? Yeah, it was Laverna talking about, like, hey, bitch, I made you. <laughs> I'm your Unreliable mother. Unreliable narrator. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I... I've heard lore of the way children are made, and uh, there is a missing component <laughs> in which I was conceived. So, are you sure that um, <laughs> your your hag mother was actually your mother? I mean, I don't have the hag facts to prove it. So, <laughs> sure. well, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, hags steal children. Yes, I think you were just stolen. I think you were taken, and then. I mean. Possibly, I as again as far as I can remember, I've always lived with, you know, Laverna and Harmony. Yeah. Harmony. Yeah. Harmony. Um, because I couldn't remember if I called her anything else. I mean, I called her mother, but I, uh, I also assumed that I looked like Harmony. You do. you do. Why would I think that she was not my mother? She could have altered her appearance. You also looked like someone else. Melitho and Melissa said they did not have any children. Yeah. But she looks like them. Yeah. Yeah, she is like the spitting image of a young Melissa from when we've seen young Melissa in dreams. I think I killed your dad. <laughs> Fantastic. Anybody in here kill my <laughs> uncle? Cousins? I killed your Sister? Dad. I'm aware. Do you have any, do you have names? Not particularly. I, what do you mean you killed my father? No, I did, not in character. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they may have just taken you. From where? Possibly Oglatha. Laverna just said literally that the, ha- the hut is not your home. And that it's north. North of there would be that. There's really nothing else here, unless you were born in the cave. Born in the cave. I mean, possibly. I don't. I don't. What's wrong with cave birth? <laughs> nothing. Just... All, it's the latest trend. All the kids are doing it. Kids. <laughs> that, yeah, that, they're being born in caves. That's what we be doing. Yeah. The mind, John. It yearns. <laughs> it yearns to be you. <laughs> Mother, have you heard of a cave mother? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it is a possibility that I was taken, and perhaps I was taken from Algalatha, but I just, I don't. You still look remarkably oh. like your mother. Which begs the question where was I created, by who was I created, and for what purpose? I, I also know that I... my blood serves. A higher purpose, hence why... A harmony was someone before she was a hag. I'm not it, negating that. I just... It's... 
Perhaps you two join the coven together? Are you implying that my mother was pregnant prior, before being turned into a hag? Possibly. In the midst of... We don't know much about How old where she you? went after she left Elglatha. Day Walker. <laughs> Evolution. <laughs> How old are you, really? I'm but a young woman. A young woman's <laughs> age. Sea. Of the sea. <laughs> we are <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm so goddamn I much. mean, I appear like I'm in my, like... 20s. 60s to 70s. 70s. No, you look like Hold you're in your early 20s. Pain. You are like. <laughs> That's I about that. 28. We need to 30. talk to you about that. You should lay low. We. Human <laughs> aged. I mean, we, we know that. We know that Desio gave up a child at one point. Yes. Perhaps. Perhaps that's <laughs> a horrible woman uh, at the yeah, orphanage. She, she made Nesgrim, Nesgrim you know, drink you know, tea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yes, that's the yeah, my good friend. She oh, was. Much, she I was. I hated her. My worst enemy. <laughs> they. They. She, they, she they, was they good bad enemy. <laughs> you, you remember? We told you they killed her. Good. We. <laughs> How dare you? Tessio was uh, one of the one of the women working at the <laughs> orphanage. She was very when we met her. She was very uptight, mm -hmm. uh, really strict, and we found out she was a hag. Yes, uh, the hard she, way. <laughs> she gave us some tea, <laughs> like of the gossip variety. Of it kind was of. it was yeah, a kind of. leafy leafy Jeez, dirt kind of. variety. Oh. And I took a little sip, and Nesgrim drank the whole thing, and then he that almost tracks. died, so... Yes, he was very thirsty. Um, he did, he did, but did we... sound like the hag. <laughs> that was so Nesgrim? <laughs> Aether saw a vision of her. Yes, crying in a field, having made a, some sort of a deal for a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember working with Desiel, I don't... I don't know. She never I treated me. <laughs> I don't remember she never cried. Cried. You she didn't even have eyes. Oh my god. No, I don't. I mean, she. I. I knew Desiel. She never treated me any differently. She. Well, she was. Then you said she was horrible. I mean, no differently it's... than anybody else. She treated everybody oh. horrible. She was strict she... and harsh. But she. She became a hag as well, and. Yes. May have traded some. Either traded her child for that power, or traded, like, accepted that power because of her child. It was not. It was unclear. It was unclear, but perhaps. I mean, why else would someone choose to become a hag? It, it seems, for these, for those who were not stolen as as children, voluntary. Power. Possibly. It just, I don't know. It feels as though. Because it was forever ago, do you guys want me to remind you? Was it Mary Bell? Yes. Yeah, she took that's what Mary I was Bell. Thinking. The reason why she made the trade to become a hag was because she was distraught that Madeline had been given directory over the orphanage was that instead it? of her. Mm, that's right. So, like, when she was crying, it was the guilt of, like, I can't believe that I'm about to do this. Yeah, I gave away someone else's child. I get, yes. This. Like, yes. Gotcha. It was so long. Yeah, it's yeah. been literally like three That was years. like the fifth episode. Things started lining up, and I was like, I didn't want to over, like, yeah. step anybody, but I was like, that yeah. was Corrin's kid, right? Yeah, in yeah. terms of, like, oh, it's right. legitimately three plus years ago in actual human existence, like... Pre-COVID. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Um, I think it is possible that your, uh, hag mother stole you and gave you to Laverna in order to become a hag. I think you were part of a deal. I mean, possibly. I just, I, things don't line up. Of like, show me the way to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, <laughs> Felthulia. Good morning, Felthulia. Oh, the hangover is horrible. My head is bounding. Oh. Much worse than just the disease that plagues my body. But <laughs> good God, how do you do this? Well, I'm still young. 
Oh, <laughs> damn it all! <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll I'll give me old uh, lesser restoration and remove his hangover. Thank you. Oh, you're lesser a restoration. Thing. You're very welcome. So what close. are you doing, <gasps> the witch? I'm trying to <laughs> piece together some things. What kinds of things? So <laughs> the pile of. Drugs? Crown pieces. <laughs> oh, dear God. Her silhouette is distinctly different. <laughs> yes, you're missing. I'm a new girl. You're missing your adornment. <laughs> a new boy. I, uh... <laughs> to the castle. <laughs> no, I, um, I was, I was apparently brought up by hags, which I did not know were hags my at God. the time. <laughs> well, I, in my defense, I did not know they were hags while I was being oh, raised. Good. Nor would I have had a say. Oh, yeah. In who raised me. Um, <laughs> um... And it wasn't until very recently that I discovered they were hags and that I thought I had been lost in the woods and instead might have been abandoned. Uh, mm. He killed my mom. Oh, my. Um, keeps her teeth as a necklace. Uh, all, and my all, aunt. All of us killed your mother. <laughs> I was, did. Oh, he has the trophy. Excuse I, me. I did. I, I did. I did kill your mother. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, was, everybody here Wait, killed no, my parents. I can assure you that Nesgrim did not. <laughs> <laughs> he was frozen. <laughs> well. What a good man, I guess. I don't know. Either way. Well, she was a hag. Uh, Are you going to keep her? Uh, she was trying to kill us, too. Uh, that. that, that and, she's, and she stole a child. A uh, oh. Probably. That. Possibly. Well, we were trying to save a child. Yes. So she was a bad person. The hag just also happened to be a thing. But apparently my aunt is uh, using me for something. We're not quite sure what. And we also don't know if my mother is my actual mother, how I was created, because I was not conceived. I was created. Oh, where yes. I came from. Okay. According to someone who has vested interest in keeping you in the dark. That is fair. It was also information I've gotten from my aunt, which could <laughs> also be a lie. Ooh. Metaphorically and physically in the dark. Yes. I was just curious what was for breakfast, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot. Oh, I... Uh, Herbs and meat. Oh, thank God. I'm sorry for the complexities that you face. I can't really offer you any solutions to this experience. Um, eggs are bad. Eggs are good. Spices are great. Meat is my favorite. Wink. Did you suggest we eat eggs for breakfast? Did you suggest we eat eggs for breakfast? I would love some eggs. <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> There's a bird child. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna get one for breakfast. Oh my god! Oh, my family! Murderer! To be fair, the trial. We as mammals eat other mammals. Mm-hmm. I don't think a bird eating other birds is really. It's perfectly natural. I've never, I've never eaten a <laughs> mm. Where is that turkey? <laughs> Where is he? Uh. I'm gonna peep at these uh these crown pieces, yeah. try to find like a big chunk of it, sure. where I can actually see like a good cross section of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you said they cracked like metal. Yeah. Like I'm assuming like frozen metal after it's been like um, cooled too rapidly and it just crumbles. Yeah. It's um, brittle. Does it have like any sort of a structure that resembles that of bone? Yeah. So it kind of looks like a uh, like spindly. a fossil. Like yeah. Almost. Spindly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would show Ethier because he's bone man over here. You would know. Bone. You ever seen anything like this before? Bones. <laughs> I know, but it's like metal. Bone. Uh, Crumbly metal bone. You've yeah. never seen metal bones, but sure. Again, like this is. It looks like it has that same, you know, for bone where like it'll fracture and splinter and then, you know. Yeah. Similar. But there's a there's a pattern to yeah. it. This is a stretch. I, I've seen clearly, like, fractured and broken bones before. Mm. And I assume that they have some sort of unique pattern to yeah. them. Mm. Would I be able to tell, if that was a bone, what bone is it? Yeah, they would be the bones of hands. Oh, God. Those are hand like, bones. Mm. No, 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 no. Balloons. It came off her head, not a ham. Yeah, no, she, she had hands around her. Yes, those are, those are made of... If they were, if those metal oh, fragments hand. were bones, those yeah. are the bones of hands. <laughs> <laughs> How yes. many points were there? Seven. You had seven hands on your head. There was only six sets.
Where's the seventh? Right there. That doesn't make any sense. The crown was a separate object. Unless there's a bone somewhere else. You have a tail. Who told you? <laughs> <laughs> you have a tail. <laughs> An Audi belly button. It's just a pump. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's articulated. <laughs> It's great for videos. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, ever heard. Uh, Possibly uh, in my entire life. Like. I, <laughs> I hate uh, that. Uh, that's awful. That's you need to hang up your coat. <laughs> I gave you a hug. It's a monkey hook. <laughs> it's a monkey hook. Uh, you make a wish on it. The finger curls up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so the seventh set, where would it be? Well, I'm, it, it's possible that it is just seven fingers, not seven hands. If there are seven points, yeah. put them in a little it'd be bag. seven fingers. Seven fingers? Yes. What has seven fingers? Do the hags have normal hands? Yeah. Unless it's they a don't bone have weird each seven fingered. Nope. That were wrapped around me. Like a contribution from one person. Yeah. Yeah. Like each set of hands that were wrapped around me, the spirit of said arms, I suppose, were possibly from the bones that were instilled in my head. Weren't we just talking about using your fingers for magic? I feel like we did last week. <laughs> yeah. We talked about cutting off one of your fingers, right? You were talking about cutting off one of my fingers, and nobody we said- We needed a bone! We- <laughs> <laughs> and you had them all along. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you want to... the cut, bones we found along the way. I don't, I don't think these are the bones we want to use, though, for doing any kind of, like, healing oh, spells. No, They're corrupted. No, no, no. Thariel, does your magic still work? What a spell can I cast? She <laughs> <laughs> just kills one. <laughs> Blood ritual. <laughs> 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 she gets <could> fireball. <laughs> <laughs> she hey. looks, just dodges. <laughs> fireball. Double gun. Um, <laughs> you have like a cantrip or anything? Yeah. I was going to cast silence on Felix, but I was like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't like, matter. <laughs> the one person, it doesn't right. matter. <laughs> cast thaumaturgy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, your magic still works. Well, that answers that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm going to go lay outside before my brain explodes from all this nonsense. Let me know when the meat's ready. Yeah. Also are the, breakfast. Are the, other, <laughs> are the others all right? Who? The other people. Oh, the ones in the the, the igloo sleeping. Yes, they're fine. <laughs> Good. All of them? There is the dog man. Yes. The two vampiric women. Yes. And the small bird girl. Yes. <laughs> yes, those four people. And then the fifth man. <laughs> <laughs> the owl bear. Me. me <laughs> I thought Barry got out. <laughs> I was also fine. <laughs> that was literally asking. when you were going through uh, Retora's um, story of like what we would see. I just picture an owl bear like walking up, looking at the tree, and just shaking his head, <laughs> walking away. Like, nah, no. I can't go over there. No, no. no I gotta go kill Barry. <laughs> I'm just gonna crowbar. <laughs> I got a dog that needs to be dealt with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm being hunted. <laughs> Have a nice day, ma'am! Um, we will let you know when the food is ready. Oh, dear God, thank you. Yes, of course. Scale, scale one to ten. Yeah. How bad is uh, Felfa looking? With ten being like runway model, and one being like <laughs> death incarnate. Ten. Literally dead. He's been <laughs> at like a two. Yeah, like, like, a, like, like a solid like one and a half now. Like he definitely looks a little bit worse, but also he's hung over. Like That's he casts rest lesser restoration, so like... He feels a little better, but like he still looks pretty fucked up. Okay. He's I just want to make sure it wasn't like <laughs> rapid decline. It's like, oh no. Yeah. Okay. No, it seems like he's he's going, but not any faster than usual. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, this is this is more of a bit of a out of game question. Uh huh. Do we know that? Like greater restoration wouldn't work on the rot. You have no idea. That that no idea that that wouldn't work on the rot. Like it, it's it's not like an uncommon spell. It's just a high level yeah. spell. So like, we wouldn't know of like people trying that Correct. in history. Mm -hmm. I can't use it today, so. It's like <laughs> 
<laughs> Back to the bottom. <laughs> Again, eat your, keep your no legs. <laughs> Is anyone... Are you the only one able to cast that stuff? Only because of this. You know. How how does the prayer beads work? You just this hold them up and... Who are you praying to? Arthur I mean... Hartwood. No. <laughs> Arthur. Uh, I'm... Any magic I use usually comes from from nature, the the ground beneath my feet, the trees. And I... So when it doesn't feel any different when I use it, I I don't think I don't think you would be able to use these with your magic. I just mean in the sense of like do you like crush the bead like it actually it, it's illuminated and the light just goes out hmm. it does restore I rolled very well on these <laughs> um, but it does restore after the next dawn restora does anyone happen to have a healing potion by any chance no never had <laughs> let's take never. a look I, we... I probably do have we know. once picked up a healing potion? I'm fairly certain I have. I don't want to be that guy. You guys have like a dozen when we were in Felfar, then. Oh, oh, yeah. A really good one. Yeah. You have I, a have a, I have yeah, the you world have a superior, juice Yeah, you have a, like, a superior one. I'm just saying I still have a piece of the Widow's Whale. Oh, I didn't write down how many. I think I only have one. Which I know sounds scary, but I also, while in the library in... Whitehall discovered that widow's whale um, was sometimes used as a cure all. It's like a foundational ingredient in apothecary. It and is. That is, <laughs> well, it, it is a part of the ailment. It's a. It's an ingredient. Yes, Luna's a curing beverage. I'm just. It's not permanent. Yeah, he's no. already imbibing in that. Hmm. I also read that it amplifies the effects of healing potions. Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Take that superior. Uh, worse healing. Be mainlining. Uh, <laughs> what is way? The only problem is, is I don't know if you would be able to handle, and I mean literally with your hands, the widow's whale. I would have to do it. Thing is, I've only got. Two of these. I know I have at least one potion of healing. I could use a we could use a regular one. Yeah, okay, because I got two superiors that are the uh, yeah. the the mushroom juice. Mm -hmm. Oh right, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, it's we'll, just, juice. we'll just use a regular potion then. Because the only other alternative I have is possibly trying to do what they were doing in the inner sanctum, which may turn him feral, be no. nothing at all, or C possibly something good. I'm not entirely sure, though. I don't know what rune to even cast said spell on if I were to try. I don't think we should we be messing with magics that. that we don't understand. We don't know what the rune looks like. You would just be tracing symbols and blood on him. Like summoning demons? I'm like, yes, oh no! <laughs> we definitely should, you should not become the demon caller. You just write corn on Well, Rator gets to and Vorce gets to. How come I can't? I've called no demons. But your name literally means demon caller. I don't think it does. I mean, Wait, that tree was, was that whistling. The cat called. I... It was a demon tree. It wasn't a demon tree. The ground was desecrated. By demons. <laughs> you were calling. Because you're a demon caller. I... History check on whistling trees. <laughs> 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 there is something tangential that I can give you, so sure. Genuinely. Now this is also important. This has to be. This has have to do with any information on fiends, John, because that would change my role. <laughs> no. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Seven. Just regular history. Yep. Thirteen. Whistling Tree does not sound familiar in terms of what she witnessed, but 
instrumentally for what shamans and other people would have used, you guys would have had um, like wind chimes and other things like that. Like flutes and stuff like that. Yes. I think the reason why I gave you the history check is Boris is a smart enough dude to pick out the like those things only worked because there was wind and she was standing in a place with no wind. Hence demons. I don't think that he was demons. <laughs> not, not to say that it's demons, but that like, oh, something was manifesting. There was air coming from somewhere. Yeah, presumably yeah. inside the tree yeah. is what I'm getting. Yeah, because if it wasn't blowing through the trees, it could have possibly been coming up through the ground as mm. like... Okay, yeah. But there was no... The air was still. Right? Correct. That's yeah. why I'm saying from perceivably within the gap itself, from within the mm-hmm. hollow of the tree. Yeah, like you uh, you, know, you know like a flute, right? Yes. You gotta blow through it to make the sound. Mm-hmm. It wasn't windy. So maybe the wind was like under the tree. Yes. Or within. Yeah. That... Or like there was like a chasm or something. It was like... Whoosh. Straight to hell. When I... I... <laughs> maybe... My memories of that day are a little, a little blurry. I did get. You did get knocked on the head. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Um. But I, I don't. There was no change in the tree. It, whatever I, had touched, I don't recall it. Hurting or feeling like much of anything, right? There's. Nope. Then maybe it was what but, was under or inside the tree that he was trying to keep away from you. Whatever it was, I mean, he. This I. I'm so. I'm so confused about how. He ties into all of this. I I don't know if he's. I don't know whose side he's on. Or what he knows that he was keeping from me. Um, And we worked together for a very long time before that point. Um, It seemed like you saw something you were not supposed to see. That... That was the day I left. I I woke up and ran. Um Patella when he was he was very very well respected. Uh I assumed if he had turned against me in some way, that there was no home left for me to return to. And I thought Oshwamp would be safer. That's... I might have fared better. <laughs> yes. With with an entire city uh, calling for my head, quite frankly, but... It is impossible to have known that. The... The fact that he's here, I still... Every piece of information I learn just makes things more confusing. Can relate. What? I don't know if I see him again, if... I should be happy. Or... Or if he would be an enemy on site, genuinely. So you don't know what we would do if we found him? No. Well, there's, there's one thing that you can be sure of in your feeling of meeting him again. You can feel ready. I do not feel ready. I don't well, think as, anybody will ever feel ready to face. Well, as long as you're with us. If he decides to be a friend, great. If he decides to be a threat, I feel bad for him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still think he's... If he is a threat, I still think he's a formidable one. It's not a decision you need to make today. 
you are slowly but surely learning more things about him, which oh. will hopefully help to formulate your opinion on him. It's not an easy pill to swallow to learn the one that you looked up to is not the person they said they were. I've... It will come with time. I thought that was a lesson I had already learned. And what? I somehow keep learning it over and over again. He... I think he intended for me to come here, but I, I don't know why. Perhaps he intended for you to do something that he could not. He seemed to be roped in with some individuals that wanted that earth from him, whether willingly or not. The fact that he trained you in his ways and only cast you away because you saw what you were not supposed to see. That to me points to him being a mentor, trying to point you in the direction to do something good that he was no longer able to do. For what it's worth too, it's not worth beating yourself up over possibly making a similar mistake to one you had made in the past. Trusting and learning to care for somebody for them to break your trust is not something that was your fault. I want to trust him. He's... I, he treated me more like family than my family did. If you had not seen him that day, you might still be there. You would have had more days. Would I have been there doing good or bad, though? That we cannot say. All we can say is that that moment, you witnessing that event, is what caused you to have to leave. Good or bad. For what it's worth, better does not always mean best. It may have been better than your parents, but not the best for you. Thing to keep in mind. The orphanage was much better than living in the woods by myself with nothing to help keep me alive. I would not go back to the orphanage. Staying with Eve here is pretty cool. He cooks breakfast. He does cook breakfast. <laughs> but I'm sure you can attest to it too. A bad dish with a little bit of seasoning does not make it a better dish. It is still a bad dish. So uh, for fuck, I guess we'll never eat again. <laughs> eat your terrible, horrible cooking. Still, <laughs> still food. Speaking of cooking, still hot food. Don't put any of that water in it. Which water? How did you even meet that woman? Do you think we weren't going to get to this? Yeah. That was a very normal experience. <laughs> there was nothing normal about that experience. You literally drank her. Do, do I in the day, in the day, do I actively remember that or not till now? Not till now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I do not really remember that experience going down that way. Yeah, she told you like other things yeah. like on the day to day, like that was just a like it was definitely different than how she normally yeah. was. Uh, how did you meet her? She lived in my village. Lived in the village. Yes. Totally like, normal. Like he in the house or like in the bay? In like a hut. Was the hut in the bay? No, it was by the bay. Oh. Okay. Home by the sea. <laughs> yes. so, so she was like the town healer. I just want to get everything clear. Yes. Part of the vision, you were in the water <laughs> and so was she. Yep. Why were you in the water? Because my uncle's ship was collapsing. You were going the to the, you were going to the... I swam out. And she was already there? I do not really remember. <laughs> like to your Ethan, you don't do it. <laughs> you won't make it. He's already dead. 
Goggles down there on the boat. I think I realized that I could not make it and started to swim back, but the details are blurry. Okay. Um, But I tried to swim out during the storm. She seemed to indicate that perhaps I did not make it back from that particular swim. Okay. Uh, That's a... That's something. Yes. If you feel dead. (laughs) (laughs) You You got it. It's good. It was good. (laughs) It wasn't intentional. Just gently asking, do you feel dead? Uh, Oh, shit. I like... don't think that I feel dead, but I'm not sure that I would know if I did. Well, mm. she, she didn't know that she felt off, right? Uh, Since you had it your whole life? Uh, having horns and being dead, I think, are two very different feelings. I, I, I you, 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 you said it, it felt like you could, you felt different, like you'd never had before, right? Having horns? No, after the crown broke the horns broke i mean yes i felt relief but i don't think that feels anything like dying i'm not that's not what i mean <laughs> yes, having been yes. part of the dead kids club do yes. i feel dead no. <laughs> you feel I, feel, I feel alive yeah, but feel like alive. do i feel Am like I part of the do dead i kids feel club? like an essence of like emptiness okay. from that time that i did no. die <laughs> <laughs> like is there a li- like a lingering like have you, you like know. a like, dimmer <laughs> spark? No. Yeah, like a void kind of feel nope. when thinking of. I, mean, or... I would say philosophically that you wouldn't feel necessarily a sense of like hollowness or antipathy. I would think that you would perceive and experience that uniquely in your own way, like new lust for life. Like that's a if you came back from the dead, <laughs> how do you think you'd feel? Second chance. Yeah, like I, I don't think that there, there's there is not a okay. unilateral <laughs> statement that I want to make about that. I think that that is a, a unique and interesting thing to permit the character to uh, interpret for themselves. Like T. U. Ertle literally experienced rebirth several times and said he always felt the same, but that's how T. U. Ertle experiences it. Ether, you. <laughs> what do you do? that little <laughs> thing that I wrote in there of you died at sea <laughs> you were brought back by the hag as her undead servant <laughs> I'm looking see you hi squad I see you shadow. see you turtle <laughs> <laughs> see you turtle <laughs> shit uh, uh, turtle If you're looking to do see we, if you if there's anything genuine. Oh, I definitely didn't say that I died. I'm just we, trying to see if like. Do we have a name for Ethier's god? Do we know, like, does she have a name that we've called her? There are like gods. Deity. Like, yeah, I, I mean, like. I know who she is as a player, but like, I don't know if. She's also not necessarily Ethier's god for like his magic or anything like that. That's but just, just the, the 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 person who yeah, he yeah the visits. supernatural person the yeah, supernatural he, I mean, he person. theorized it in game like the the statement of her being dawn has been stated. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't literally. I just would like to refer to her as something, and I don't know what yes. that something is. But um. Oh, I did write that. I forgot about that. What? You. Uh, that I did for sure drown. <laughs> what? Yeah, you no, what? I totally forgot that. Oh my it's god. It's been three and a half years. Yeah, that's like critical. <laughs> you died. We made fun of Nezgrim for so long. It was one detail in a very <laughs> long Yay! backstory. Yay! Dead Clins Club. Yeah. But to be fair, I didn't die. I don't know that I yeah. died. Yeah, you can drown it. You know that you died. <laughs> did you specifically wrote that you died? Or did it say no. that you drowned? Because you can drown and not die. So, um... <laughs> it's been uh, years I've been waiting for it. <laughs> um, I swam out to try to find my uh, uncle's boat. And I swam until I could not swim anymore. And I 
sank. And I saw my uncle standing at the bottom of the sea. And he reached out towards me and I, the next thing I remember is waking up on the beach. Oh my god, this has been years in the making. <laughs> Ethier, the... <laughs> the woman you visit, Dawn? Yes, only once. One other person has visited her, it seems. Yes. Who we know has... Uh, defied death. Refused to die. Yes. Could your experiences be similar? No. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> what's your What's your title again? <laughs> uh, what title? <laughs> oh, wanderer. Yeah. Wanderer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, kind of sounds a little bit like what Arthur Hartwood is. No. Uh, She's not met with anyone else, right? It was just... Not that she's told me. Did you ask? No. I've only spoken with her the one time, and Arthur was there, and he was very loud. Well, you should try again. And if Arthur shows up, you know, just... <laughs> Slightly to leave. Do you remember, like, after waking up on that beach, like, saying, like, sure, yeah, it's a deal, and shaking hands or anything like that? No. Remember Are you sure? children being yes. offered or anything? Yeah. Because what I'm getting at is, legally, you could be out of your thing with Laverna if you were already in a thing with another hat. You can't uh, double down on a contract. It's, it's, it's kind of like an annulment. Yeah, right? you're contractually <laughs> obligated to finish out the uh, like the ob obligations that you had with the first hag, and then you're up for. He yeah, might have a lawyer. good. He might have a good point. Thank you. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> Bird law. Hag law. <laughs> hag law. <laughs> <laughs> Did your kids get stolen? <laughs> it is possible that the experience is similar to what happened to Arthur, but I, did, I do not remember. Did she bring you back, or did you come back of your own volition? I do not know. I just remember waking up on the beach. But I don't really remember that particular memory. So maybe that was the being brought back part I wouldn't remember but I don't remember any transference of magic like that it may be something worth uh, commuting over History check on transferring magic to non-magical beings. Yeah. That is a natural 20. Ooh. I Thoughts. would say, <laughs> from a studious perspective, and somebody who, especially for you and your father, being vested in the pursuits of trying to understand your magical... source of your magical capabilities that witnessing what you did with Ethier would feel most closely related to a pact simply because in most other magical manifestations when magic is bestowed to something it's less a here is a singular thing that is bestowed upon you like you know that clerics and paladins often spend years in practice and in pursuit and in reverence. Right. Druids also spend years in, in practice and in reverence. Warlocks would be the closest thing. You're a warlock, Ethan. We're making pacts. <laughs> You're a wizard. <laughs> but <laughs> he is not Correct. like a warlock, Correct. obviously. And that means... I think it's also, especially with an at 20, I think it's fair to associate 
with the knowledge that Felix has gathered from alchemical studies through Felfarthen through Whitehall now, that it seems like he consumed a poultice that passed something into him spiritually. Okay, so it passed something into him spiritually. Yep. I would not come to the conclusion that that thing could be removed. Like the super soldier serum. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that you would assume it would not. Okay. All right. That's good news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that in, especially after the descriptive nature of Felix within the, the river of stars and things, everything obviously mixing together, it's still. It's never homogenous. It's all still swirling together and mashing and blending and mixing at all times. That you'd probably assume that that's what happened within him. That some spiritual passage was gifted to him. And that that's awakened something within him. I would like to share these thoughts with the group. Yeah. Ethier had his awakening after he drowned. And was gifted a poultice by a hag. And you don't remember that happening? I presume I do not remember that. No. Yeah. Again, you woke up on the beach. Right. You literally drowned. Yeah. And then you woke up on the beach. A changed man. That hag is not the one that you studied under? No, it is. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, she was just a shaman that was like a local healer for the village. But I do not remember that particular exchange. Do you remember her ever being cruel towards you? No, she was kind. Hmm. I had seen her do other rituals for people that had passed in the village. Did you work with her prior to that, or was that your first encounter with her? Other than seeing her perform the ritual before, that was... I mean, I spoke with her, but not frequently. Um, But I asked her about my uncle, and she said that his body could not be recovered. So he could not... That ritual could not be performed. Which is why I swam out after the boat. I ever visit your hometown, I could retrieve it. Thank you, Felix. I still can see the point on the horizon where it sank from standing on the dock. I do not think it is something that will ever leave my mind. Thank you. Of course. Although I am a bit concerned about breathing in the water because of what, you know, she said. Mm. <laughs> it's a little disturbing. Yes. I must have made some deal to come back. Perhaps not even realizing that it was one. Unless you made no deal at all. Unless she, out of the kindness of her heart, or for whatever reason, saw purpose and had good intentions. And brought you back just I to suppose. carry on a legacy. I know you, without, you know, for good reason, I can understand why you feel the way you do about hags. I understand your experience with them has not been pleasant. Just the one. Two. 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 Three, actually. Three. three. All three have been a problem. <laughs> well, one out of four is good, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My childhood was not a miserable one. I know you say that my parents did not great things, and while I'm now seeing it myself, perhaps this will be a lesson that don't take everything you see at face value. There is good in the world, even if it's clouded by a lot of darkness. That is true. Ether. Yes? Did you look the same as a child? 
it's... I can't stop thinking about Arthur Hartwood. Returning to someone else's body? Yes. I presume my parents would have recognized if I didn't look the same and the, all of the town. They recognized me when I woke up on the beach, so I presume so. But they did not believe me when I told them what I saw. Was it just your uncle aboard the ship, or did he have a crew? All I saw was him. Just standing there. Did he seem like he was fighting to try and get out of- Because he was, what, sucked into like a whirlpool, you said? Mm hmm. He seemed like he was accepting it, or was he trying to fight to get out of a... He did not seem like he was fighting. He just reached towards me as I sank. When you guys saw it in the vision, he had his hands still on the wheel, and he was looking down off the sides of the boat. Captain goes down with the ship. Was this like a like a large ship? What, what kind of ship are we talking? Like a... Like a simple, like, like a little, shipping... Uh, it's like a fishing you know, vessel. A fishing boat. So, no, like, below deck or anything, just no. like... Yeah. There might have been a very small mm -hmm. one. It's like mm -hmm. a medium-sized ship. Mm -hmm. Not big and mm -hmm. by any regards. Yeah, like 10 foot, 12 foot. Gotcha. Yeah, small. Do you remember the first spell you cast? A uh, healing spell on Malo. Mm -hmm. Unintentionally. I had not ever performed magic before that moment. Hmm. Have we seen Malo recently? Nope. I did not intend to. But I thought that I should try in that moment. Hmm. And it worked? Yes. I had never healed anything before. Only sent them across. This was about five years into my ten. So five years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. Refresh my memory. The clerics get their power. By making an oath? No, it's Paladin. Paladin. Just power and a belief. Mm -hmm. Traditionally from a god, though, they do not exist. <laughs> so, primarily everybody gets theirs through a belief. Hmm. They worship a, a concept, not a being. I word this without meta being perhaps you're more warlock than you are cleric possibly but that also implies that there was a deal which I do not think that there was Unless I think the deal was something again not nefarious I feel like people hear deals and assume it's money or power or that requires an acceptance and a discussion of terms there was none but she asked there. you to carry on her legacy or to help guide those through death did she not yes in a way you made a deal if i remember correctly halumlo did not bargain on his own behalf not that he remembers anyway he also died, died and woke up with newfound power hmm. sounds familiar <laughs> You don't have a gem in your hand, do you? Did you come back with no. more power? <laughs> <laughs> it is either that or I worship the only god that exists still. So. You've met someone. Something a little different, though. Um, 
best I can tell. No, it was um, when me and Rirda died at the same time, a bit mm. of him went into uh, my sword. Yeah, that's right. Kind of gives me more focus on some things. Mm. Does that still work with him? Do you still have a part of him? Returned? Nothing's changed, right? Same what is the sword? sword? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, the sword is still empowered and imbued, but no, you do not see his visage in yeah. the sword anymore. That left. Yeah. He's not in it anymore, but it's... <coughs> the power does still Bless linger. You. Bless you. Bless you? you. Bless. I'm sneezing. Okay. <laughs> Magic is weird. You... Go about sidebar. You're wearing shoes, right? You wear shoes, right? <laughs> yes. Got boots. Your feet are silver. Though. No, it's just my legs are burned. I just have like a, I have like pseudo plate so mail like, over the front of them. Okay, it's on the front. Yeah, and it, it would be over my feet also. It's like a big go sock. around. Okay. <laughs> big metal socks. Yeah, it's a big, big metal socks basically. <laughs> He's in a metal onesie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Zip leggings. <laughs> this area. Of what we saw, it looked like there was a really big... Obviously, there was a really big battle a long time ago. We're, we're headed to the uh, the killing fields, right? The what? You're going to walk around on the killing fields with your silver legs. Presumably. Probably safer that way, but... I don't think you'd be safer. I do not really have another option. I cannot walk without them. You got shoes on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have shoes. Yeah, boots over the silver. He's feet. got rubber soles on this. And I have pants on. Keep, well, <laughs> keep keep them on. Maybe maybe don't touch the ground when we go there. That seems impossible. Oh, physical, like yeah, physically, physically oh, you yes, don't okay. touch the ground. Okay, my shoes will still touch the ground. No, not your shoes. No walking. You stay on the horse or the or the or the carriage. That might be difficult, but I will certainly try. It's just while we're in the field, I don't. All right. I don't, why would that be difficult? If, uh, you didn't go a for a walk last time we journeyed for days. No, I just leapt off of the back of the cart. Well, you don't really do that. shouldn't. You should walk around every so often. I mean, you just. No, shouldn't. I'm saying the spirits will be attracted to his silver legs. And that might be a problem. I mean, we're all carrying. I mean, I'm, I'm not, but most of us are carrying bits of silver. Yes, my legs are well But they're not so. going to touch the blood-stained ground, right? Well, neither will his legs if he's not walking around barefoot. But he also has a lot more silver. I'm just saying we need to be cautious. I don't disagree with caution. Shh. Unless you plan on sending a bunch of old spirits to the other side. I have not ever done that all at once, and nor have I done that without pieces of them. I also don't want to draw a lot of things to us at this particular instance. Okay. It's just something to think about. Yes. Thank you for your uh, caution. I'll make a mental note of that. There's no need to thank me. I'm, I'm going with you. I would also be in danger. I understand. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> I'll carry you if I need to. Thank you, Vorst. Yeah. You can ride on Rirda, too. <gasps> is, his, is his head like yeah. <laughs> Poke through the igloo wall. I was going to ask meat, just, but easy to ride. Just toss <laughs> some meat. Ah, oh, <laughs> that was all. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> it scurries away. Like, See, like, the dog that like goes to every single person and is like, I haven't ever eaten ever. Eaten yeah. ever. Yeah. Please, yeah. please, I'm starving. Mm, yeah, I'm so hungry. Just mm, like toast. Mm, I'm so hungry. Yeah, Felsel would hobble back over and just, um, spices and meats. Yes, very good choice. Good for the hangover too. I'll pass the food out. Mm. Eat it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll eat mine politely. Mm-hmm. I'd make sure all of the vampiric women and also the lovely bird child get some. Yeah, little bird girl is uh, you know, happy with having a good meal. Two vampire women are definitely just still mm-hmm. passing the uh, yep. Nesgrim Cooley <laughs> back and forth. 
Are they sharing it? Yeah. That's a random question. Probably not. Does food taste any different now that my uh, hugs are no longer happening? My crown's <laughs> broken? <laughs> <laughs> no, food still tastes the same. You did not have any issues with, with taste previously. Okay. Your teeth hurt, though. All your crowns have shattered. Oh, no. That's good. Dentist humor. <laughs> well, you guys have sat around here with everyone. Having some breakfast. I don't know what else you guys want to do. I mean, I would ask Fel Fool... Um, you remind me of uh, you said something before. Oh yes. I, I can't. I can't remember exactly what. All right. It was very important. I've said many things. <laughs> Dear God. Was I don't it, remember what he said. Was it you referenced it, it. You referenced it in the vision. Yeah. If said what Felthul says is true, could the opposite be? Oh, true? when Felthul was specifically talking about conceptually Breakfast. for magic and with arcane foci. If things are at a greater sense of power under pain or duress, could they also then be under greater power if they are happy or filled with love? Blissful, right, yeah. Blissful. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. The extremes. Mm-hmm. That's a very good meat pile, Ethia, thank you. Oh, you are very welcome. Easy to get rid of the leftovers from last night. Yeah. Easier to travel. You all still mean to make way to Fainter's Leeson? That we may get Yaz back home? Mm-hmm. Yes. Very good. Back it on up. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to do at this camp. We briefly talked about what we're doing in terms of like potions or evil magic that I'm not comfortable doing. Well, I'm glad you admit that it's evil. Possibly evil. No, nothing is inherently evil. The things that happen after magic is done might not be great. I'm sure Felthul was correct when he said that. Prior to meeting you. Well, I was talking about the symbols in magical circles and sigils and things like that. Those things are not evil. Um, I think the desecration that I've seen is Oh, uh, yes. Evil. Magic can be used definitely for wicked and malevolent purposes. See, but that is not the, inherently evil. That is right. the intent of the magician. Correct. You. <laughs> yes, you would then be evil in that instance if you were performing evil magic. Which I wouldn't. You're a witch? <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm assuming you're not wearing your veil and I'm actually seeing the crazy eyes. <laughs> Just take it easy. Um, no, I mean, we discussed possibly using a, a potion to help Felthul. Is that still a possibility? With the widow's whale? Well, I'm drinking the ailment stuff that Vos was kind enough to give to me and has been delaying my issues. What if we just add a potion? Into the ailment? Yeah. Well, no, let me... Well, because the me... ailment's already got... It's already got the, the widow's whale in widow's it. You might do too much. I mean... Too I, much who am, I, who am I handing this to? I was going to put a more concentrated <laughs> widow's whale into it. <laughs> well, the... I'm going to drink this if someone doesn't take it. Why? Okay. Do you need it? Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, because that's what we were saying so the widow's will I know widow's will is already in the potion or the ailment or whatever he's drinking yes but I don't know if it's a small amount or yes those are brewed specifically by people with alchemical and apothecary knowledge of which we don't have anyone currently maybe hand that back to me (laughs) I would think that perhaps too much would Either accelerated or kill him. Yeah. Yes. I, I think, mean, uh, the... we should probably call somebody <laughs> who's a uh, thing this actually is. I think Iris is going to call today. I could have her ask Luna. I think, um. I mean, Seraphina's with her. Seraphina, yeah, would be the one. I could also ask Corin if he's got any insights. Could, like... could you dial me in on that call? Or, you know. <laughs> is that a thing that I can do? I have no idea. I don't think so. Okay. Could, uh, Just make sure nothing's lost in translation when you're telling us what to do. 
Like, I could add my blood to it. I don't know if that would do anything. Let's not do that. Maybe you just start throwing arbitrary things into you his really mouth. You really want me to have some of your blood, it seems. I just, I'm... I'm You're a very giving I'm, person. I've got a hunch that there's something up with my blood that might help you. I'm not sure what. <laughs> You don't have a you don't have a hunch. No hunch. Hush. <laughs> no, it's hunch. <laughs> what, what 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 would be strange about your blood? You might wind up freezing him from the inside. What? What? Um, no, I I'm I'm strangely not affected by certain poisons and things and such. Her blood runs cold. Oh. And also, I've touched the. I did it. Widow's whim, Damn. and it hasn't affected oh. me like it does others. So, I don't know if it's just something about me inherently, or if there's something within my makeup that makes me less likely to be affected by various conditions. I wonder if it was your crown. Fuck, I did not think about that. Are you in the sun right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that aspect of it, but the fact that you were touching the widow's will, you had uh, so many hands. <laughs> Batting away the bad vibes. I mean, they may have just... Protected me? Touched it in your stead. Well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do have the widow's will. Yeah. <laughs> is, she, gonna... is she in the sun, by the way? Still, I, still, I mean, I would say that we're in the igloo and like in the midst, like packing around. Like, okay. Yeah. So I mean, intermittently she would be in the sun as we're doing all this stuff, and no, she'd be on no steam, no burning. Yeah. Okay. No, no burning. I take out the vial, the sliced widow's whale bark. Yeah, the goo. Yeah. Yeah, the goo vial, the goo pile. I the goo will vial. Just very tiny bit just dip my fingernail into it. So, <laughs> with it being. You know, like something like this, and mm-hmm. you got like maybe that. Oh, uh, I mean, maybe. My fingernails are really long. My fingernails are very long. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I would say you make contact with it. No adverse effects. Yeah. Well, put yeah, a little bit on my skin to just show. <gasps> you put some on your flesh. Mm-hmm. Well, now we're in a whole different ballgame. <laughs> <laughs> no effects. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, do we know that? Have we touched it? Any of us? Nope. Would you like to? What are you trying to get with? What? What? Hmm? You have that potion? Uh, you you still have it? No. Everybody just touch it, goo. Not, please, it's, not Ratora. Touch please, the goo. Boris, touch goo. Yeah, I'll touch the goo. You save your bad hands. I mean, I would have, I would have. No effects. Oh my god. Fingers are stuck together. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. <laughs> it's actually, what, what is actually what's it called? The uh, sovereign glue. Yeah. <laughs> Ether, get get your tinder box out again. <laughs> no, no effect. What does it smell like? Uh, You're ambrosia? inhaling it. Huh? Ambrosia. I love uh, at, at this stage of it, with it being cold and much more gelatinous, it wouldn't give off like an ambrosia odor to it. It would definitely give more of a That's all. <laughs> sweet, almost herbal aroma, like a basil. Mm-hmm. Can I get pulled over? I'm going again? for it. <laughs> Vorst. 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 Come on, Vorst. Nick. Yeah, no, we got a very small amount. No effect. Anyone have the number for poison control? <laughs> spit it out, spit it out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, forgive me, yes, when things are harvested, uh, sometimes the potency uh, fades away over time. So we have to, like, reduce it? Perhaps. Again, I'm not a potion maker myself. No, I know how no, to make a root. No, it means we need to increase it. But... Get out. No, no I'm... A, a very small amount what? of uh, make it congealed substance like, it, uh, like, might not have uh, penetrated into your body sufficiently. Not make it smaller. Or been yeah, used in sufficient yes. uh, count of quantity. <laughs> I think perhaps we should hold off until we can speak with Serafina. We also don't know if it can be used in that form. Things can be in different forms. That is, it's gelatinous phase. Something might need to be done to it to like awaken it, the effects of it. Like it needs a ferment? Perhaps. Perhaps ferment. Heated. 
perhaps heated. I, I don't know. Again, I've not experimented with this, but... Well, perhaps if Iris calls, we can ask them. And if they don't know, well, you'll die anyway, right? So. Oh, oh yes, I can already feel once again the, the chilling grip of death around my neck. Sorry, I'll take your hands off. Oh! <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. I just thought that was a breakfast thing. Breakfast. <laughs> 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 you son of a bitch. I think she will call later today. We should probably get moving. Yes. We have a long journey ahead of us and we don't want to lose. I mean, I, I guess I'll I'll use Druidcraft and see what the I was just about to ask of the weather. What the weather's going to be like going mm-hmm. forward for the day. Yeah, I mean, you've got a couple hours of, you know, light to moderate snow, and then it definitely picks up, and it's a a much denser, overcast, heavier snow for the later half of the day. So, I mean, maybe like six to eight hours of slight snowfall, very cold, uh, and then roughly like 10 to 12 hours of pretty dense, heavy snow again. How's traffic going to look? Not good on 95. <laughs> <laughs> 95. 95 and El Glatha collapsed. Mm-hmm. Actually, all of the highways in El Glatha collapsed. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we yeah. probably want to get, get moving as quickly as possible. We're going to have a bit of a easier time traveling earlier yes. in the day. Uh, w- one thing before we leave. Felthul, how do you typically hide the presence of igloos? Right? You don't want to be tracked. Oh, yes, indeed. You don't uh, just smush it down and then make it look like something was there. You probably melt it. Do you have a methodology? Oh, I mean, I'll usually take this stick. Uh-huh. And I will go to some points of the structural integrity of the dome from the outside and collapse it. Right, but then you have a snow pile that someone was clearly here. Yeah, but it's going to snow today. Oh, uh, well, there was a person here, but I make sure that my tracks are not followed. Ethier, I think we're being followed. By who? The same orcs. Oh, no. They're probably dead. Different orcs. <laughs> Bless. Maybe the delicious peanut man. <laughs> Bless. Bless. Thank you. bring up the peanut man. <laughs> <laughs> what about the cheddar man? Him either. Um, it is possible, but snow does fall off of... Uh, trees as it collects in the upper canopy when it falls into piles. Yes, I'll smooth it out with the, the old rod. <laughs> and his stick. <laughs> I, I think it um, that is a fairly common thing. There are piles of snow uh, around that have fallen off of the trees. Uh, as long as we disperse it a bit, it is harder to track. What? I'll show you. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> He just starts poking around the lower edge of the dome. And it starts to, like, collapse after a couple good thrusts. <laughs> you know. Was Weirdo still in there? Oh, <laughs> <dear> the dogman! <laughs> he just pokes his head out of the snow. That was cool. I could have killed you. That's what makes it cool. You're an interesting fellow. Let me help you. And he just pulls it down into the snow. <laughs> just fucking... <gasps> snow rabbit! <laughs> <laughs> He just crawls out of the fucking <laughs> hovel and he just looks at him and he's like, I'm glad we're friends, buddy. And then, you know, comes my Every voice. day closer to death. Oh my god. <laughs> I saw my light flash before my eyes. Oh dear. It won't be the last time today. No, probably not. I feel old. Withered. That's, uh, nope. Let's get, to the, let's get you to the carriage. Come on. Thank you. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, you elbow the rest of the bag. He's covered in fucking snow. He's definitely, like, shivering and shaking. He doesn't look good. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming Yaz and the other vampire women uh, hop on into the back of the carriage and sit with Felthul. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, there's anything else you guys want to do? No, I would hop into the carriage. Mm-hmm. Hop on my horse. Just check the time and direction and... Yeah, no, you guys are. I'd say you're leaving roughly around seven a.m. We went to bed at a reasonable time. Didn't take that long to pack up and break down the uh, the two igloos. Uh, well, 
The thing is, you guys have your map. I'm assuming we are just hugging something. Like yeah. how, how, how are we? Line. Yeah, we're gonna stay outside either on the tree, line. the tree line or just within it, just to stay. I out definitely of. don't want to go into the. Foggy. I would keep them out of the sun. Is what sure. I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. Okay, with the vampire women. Yeah. So, how far out from the fell wood and then the transition into the marsh because it's marshes north of the swamp or uh, north of the fellwood how far out from that area would you try to stay mm, how long would it take us to get to where the marshy area starts from where you guys are in the fellwood roughly like an hour you guys were very close to the edge of the fellwood it's, it's not like it's a straight line like it is kind yeah. of and it's still relatively early morning yeah I think we pretty specifically want to stay out of the marsh. Yeah. Um, we're going to have at least a couple hours of travel mm -hmm. where we're kind of covered by the trees. I'm trying to think of like where the sun's going to be in relation to where they are in the car. I mean, we can keep them covered. Yeah. I mean, the sun yeah. moves, you just move into the tree line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll stay with outside of the tree line just to make up good time okay. going north. It's also overcast. It is snowing. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're good. Yeah. We'll stay on the outside of the tree line then. Is where I would leave them. How far from edge of tree line in a distance in terms of feet slash whatever other quantifiable numerical value you would like to give me? I'm like 15 Six, to 20? I'd say almost 16. 200 feet. Same That's why I'm asking. Numbers. Um, I would say 200. Really? Yes. I think 200 might put us too out in the open. 200 feet's a long ways away. Right. I mean, maybe a hundred. <laughs> maybe fifty. Maybe. I think he's worried about the ghosts and the. Yeah, I'd say fifty to a hundred is probably good. Mm -hmm. All right. Sure. The ghosts. Yeah. We'll, we'll split the difference on it. Hundred now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, then I would say that you guys make your, you know, fifty or so feet back out west, hit the edge of the fellwood, and start traversing northbound. <laughs> yeah no we're gonna end there with you guys picking up for the next leg of your journey north trailing along the western edge of the fell wood and then the the marches north of it from where the hand cut was towards famous lisa yeah. friends thank you very much for watching this evening i hope you enjoyed the episode as much as we did um, we will be live on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time for the Lost Kings of Adorus, and then next Monday for the City of Oshwamp at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you all, and we will see you next time. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye.